guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're gonna talk about a 30-day plan to learn English. And uh, what I want you to do right now is uh, first of all to take out your exercise book or maybe your notes in your phone uh, in order to write things down because we're gonna go through the plan day by day. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna do. And I guarantee you that if you follow this plan, by the end of day 30, you would be amazed how English has become your habit and how diverse the world of English is. That means that every day you can find something new and something exciting to do in English. And uh, this is the whole goal of this video. So please make sure that you listen carefully. Please make sure you watch it up to the very end and that you write things down. Day zero. Here you start with taking a test. I found a perfect free test for you from Lancaster University. It tests your ability to listen, to write and to read in English. Please take this test, assess where you are and write a very specific goal. Like what is your goal with learning English? I wanna take TOEFL test and score 100. I want to get accepted to this university or I want to reach upper intermediate by a certain date. So you need to come up with a very specific goal and uh, for the next 30 days, you're gonna work on achieving this goal and you're gonna work on improving your English. Now, ideally, I would love you to download something that we've prepared for you down in comments below. There is a small calendar that you can download that would follow my schedule and also some sheets that you can print out and uh, just track your progress throughout the day just write something down so on day zero I want you to write down your test result and I want you to write your goal it is very important to note your test result because you're gonna compare uh, your results at the end of this 30-day marathon day number one listening here I want you to go to ed.ted.com uh, they have a lot of videos, most of them are like two, three minute long. I want you to select a topic that you're interested in and I want you to not just watch the video. And by the way, you can watch it with subtitles or without subtitles. I would recommend to start watching without subtitles and see whether it makes sense for you. But it's also very important that you choose the video that corresponds with your interests. Like if you're interested in psychology, take that video. If you're interested in geography, take a geography video. Then if you don't understand what's going on, switch on subtitles. And the next thing I want you to do is to click on the think tab because some of the videos on that website have a comprehension test. That means you're going to test how much you understood and some of the videos also have additional information under the dig deeper tab please explore that one and share your opinion about what you saw in the discuss tab and when you share your opinion please let others know that you came here from lingua marina channel because this way you would be able to see people who actually came from this video and are doing the same thing with you and of course, if you encounter new words, write them down in day one section of the PDF file or exercise book that you're using. Day number two, speaking. On day number two, you need to watch my video about eight ways to practice English. And ideally, sign up for a Lingua Speaking Club Pro at LinguaTrip. In this speaking club, you can converse with like-minded individuals about topics that interest you. You can role-play real-life situations, attend a book club, or participate in debates. This is a perfect way to practice your speaking skills. Many of our previous students keep in touch with each other and I think it's a great opportunity to not only practice your English but to also build your worldwide network. You can join our speaking club at any moment. The link is in the description. Day number three, reading. On this day, I want you to explore a free website with news for English language learners. So they basically take news from all over the world, but they are adapted for English language learners. The website is called breakingnewsenglish.com. The news there is divided into seven levels from zero to six. So you can choose the one that suits you. Each news has several reading comprehension tasks and audio. Therefore, if you want, you can go practice listening on that website as well. Day number four, writing. On this day, I want you to write an essay, again, using the PDF that we gave you or an exercise book. I want you to write an essay about your ideal day in five years. Oh my God, guys, this task will not only help your English, but it would also help you work on your goals. Because if your ideal day looks like, oh, I wake up and I have breakfast with three of my kids and you're not even married, then you know what you're gonna do the next five years. Or your ideal day looks like waking up in a different country, then you know what you're gonna do. So please write a a small essay about your ideal day. I would say two to three hundred words. That's enough to practice your writing. Day number five, grammar. On this day, I want you to select one particular topic, grammar topic that you're struggling with. Is it present perfect or present simple or conditionals? And then you go to 
uh, I give you two options, two different websites. The first website is learnenglish.britishcouncil.org or if you're a teenager, there is a second option. You can use learnenglishteens.britishcouncil.org and you type into the search bar the topic that you struggle with the most and you read the materials on that topic. Day number six. Have you been writing down the words that I told you to write down during your listening exercises on TED, uh, during other stuff that you were doing? Now this is the day where you select 10 words that you think are the most useful. Maybe you heard them several times during your practice. Maybe you just realized they're super useful for your future. And today I want you to highlight those words, write them down once again, and also create a sentence with each word. And then spend around 10 minutes just looking through those, maybe Googling them and looking at images that are associated with those words and uh, try to memorize them. Day number seven is day off, but this is a day off in English. So do whatever you want to do, but in English. Watch my videos on Silicon Valley Girl or watch a TV show on Netflix or listen to music in English. But take five minutes to go back to the words that you highlighted yesterday or on day six and read them once again, because this would really help you memorize them. Day number eight, listening. Today you're gonna listen to a song that you really like and you need to try and write down the words that you hear. And then of course, once you've written them down, you try to sing together with a singer and only then, after you've done this, you go and Google the actual lyrics and see how close you were. If you don't like music, you can listen to the podcast from BBC Six Minute Learning. Before listening, read this week's question and vocabulary. After listening, go back to the question and answer it. The BBC also has a wonderful podcast, The English We Speak. There you can find two, three minutes podcasts where the meaning of the word is explained and examples of its use in speech are given. Do not forget to highlight words that you've encountered for the first time and spend at least five minutes memorizing them. Day number nine, speaking again, one of the most important parts of learning the English language. You can continue practicing speaking in our Lingua Speaking Club. I also have the whole series of videos where I teach you how to speak like a native speaker, mostly American English. So please watch one of the videos and start practicing your new accent. Day number 10, reading again, and I'm gonna give you a couple new ideas where you can practice your reading. You can go to a website, wrongchan.com slash reading. This site is for those of you who are just starting learning English. It contains text about various topics. Each text has an audio and some of them have tests for checking your understanding. And another website is called dreamreader.net. It is a website where you can not only train your reading skills, but also learn interesting and sometimes unusual facts about the world. Each article has audio and a test that you can take if you want to. This website is for pre-intermediate slash intermediate levels. Day 11, writing. This is another mental slash English language task. What would you do today if your English level was advanced? Like if your goal is accomplished today, what is your action plan? Because sometimes, again, our goals are not too specific. Sometimes you're like, oh, I wanna be advanced in English. And then you're advanced and what's next? So it's really important to think about those next steps and make them more specific. Like, okay, if I'm advanced today, I am uh, applying for Harvard University and go to Harvard University's website, explore the programs, write down the criteria that they're looking for. Maybe you also need TOEFL, maybe you also, well, you need TOEFL, maybe you need GMAT, maybe you need something else. Like explore that section. This is super important because this way, you know, oh, once I'm advanced, I'm applying to Harvard and I already know the website I'm going to. Like be very specific in this task. And again, write it down in either exercise book or the PDF that we've provided you with. Day number 12, grammar. And here I would suggest downloading a workbook that I've created together with my team, Lingua Trip. Grammar is all you need. It covers the most important aspects of grammar and it has an exercise book so you can practice. So today your task is to just download it and start working on one of the first topics that you select there. And again, start with something that looks the most difficult for you. Always when you have a choice, start with something that's more difficult because you're more enthusiastic at the beginning of the process rather than at the end of it. Day 13, 13 is my favorite number, <laughs> words. Now today it's time to cross out words that you highlighted before that you already know by now. So you just cross them out and you say goodbye to them because they're in your brain. But it's time for you to come up with new words. So you highlight 10 more words and repeat the same practice. You write the sentences with them and you also spend at least five minutes just reading them and uh, thinking how you would be able to use them. 
Day 14 is again our day off. You do whatever you want. I recommend watching a Netflix show called The One. This is a great show. I like their plot and I also like that it's British English for a change because I'm trying to speak American and uh, uh, they're in The One. They speak British English. They have a lot of London in that TV show. So watch that one, write down new words and spend at least five minutes repeating words from yesterday. Now you see that we're kind of repeating the topics already. It's just because it's all about consistency. It's all about being consistent with one particular topic every single week. So week three and week four, you just repeat whatever we've done before. Day 29 is when you tell yourself I'm a hero <laughs> and you go back in your notes and you like scroll through your exercise book or PDF, whatever you were doing and ask yourself, what was the most difficult part? What was the most difficult thing? And you do it once again. Because if it was difficult, there is a big, big chance you haven't understood it completely, or maybe you still need time to look at it once again. So this is the day where you look again at the most difficult topic. And day 30 is when you take your test again, you note your results, and most importantly, you share them down in comments here, and you tell me about your progress. You tell me whether it worked or not. Come back to this video at the end of day 30, and please, please, please share what you've done. Please share how it went. This is super, super, super exciting. And if you're taking this 30 day marathon, I'm just asking you to come back to this video, not only at the end of it, I'm also asking you to come back every week to just tell others that guys, I'm on day 13 where you are. Cause I want to create a community around this, around this 30 day challenge. And I think it will be really, really useful for all of you guys to come back to this video, to connect with others and to show off your progress and to see like-minded people who are doing the same thing with you. Whenever people ask me, Marina, what is the best way to learn English? I tell them practice every day. And by practicing for only 20 minutes, you can reach your goals in English pretty fast. So in this video, I'm gonna present you my 20 minute daily learning routine that you can use for learning English. I'm gonna give you resources where you can go and practice, they're completely free. We're gonna talk about different things that you can do during the day to improve your language. Before we start, I wanted to tell you about something that inspired me uh, to create this daily routine, daily practice. My younger daughter, Emily, she's three years old. She just started like a mini school for kids where they practice every day for just 10 minutes. They're doing basic stuff, connecting dots, learning words. But the key thing there, and it's called Kumon Japanese system, the key thing there is daily repetition just for 10 minutes. And 10 minutes for your brain, it's like nothing. You're like, oh, I'm gonna sit down for just 10 minutes, I'm fine. And I always uh, give her a candy after she practices because she sometimes needs this extra motivation to continue. So I want you to get inspired by a three-year-old and by this amazing system that they've created in Kumon where you practice daily, but for a very short period of time. Because sometimes if it's a two-hour class, we're like, ah, oh, maybe I should do it tomorrow, maybe I should do it next week. But when it's a 20-minute daily routine, if you tell me, Marina, I don't have 20 minutes, I tell you, you're not interested in learning a language. When you're super passionate about something, when you understand that you really need it, you're gonna find those 20 minutes. Now let's talk about the daily routine. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is listening. Listening is very important in English just because of all the accents. I've been learning English for almost 10 years when I first came to the UK and I realized like it was useless because I didn't understand what people were saying and it took me some time to actually get used to their accent. The problem with today's world is that there are so many accents. There is Indian accent, which is super popular around the world. There is Chinese accent, Russian accent, American, British, Scottish, Australian, New Zealand. Like there are so many people who speak English and your task is to make sure you understand all of them because who knows uh, who's going to be in your group when you go to a university or if you're taking an online course who you're going to be matched with to practice your english so start your 20 minute practice with a five minute listening task that could be anything youtube audiobook whatever one of the websites that i wanted to recommend is called ello.org they have a lot of lessons, including audio and video lessons on different topics. And those conversations are actually divided into levels because I know how uh, complicated it is when you go to YouTube or you start watching a TV show on Netflix and then you realize it's just not your level, it's too complicated. Well, if you are a beginner or intermediate, I would highly recommend that website because everything is based on the level of English that you have. 
What I also like about them is that they actually have a script of every single conversation, which I do not recommend you to read right away. But if you listen to a conversation and you're like, I still don't get what's going on here, then you read a script. And another thing that they've done for you, they've actually created a vocabulary so you can learn all the words that you've encountered during your listening practice. I also like that their conversations are not superficial because sometimes listening tasks sound like this and no one really talks like this in real life. People have accents, people speak fast. Uh, so on that website, you will uh, get exposed to many different accents and you will get exposed to real English language speech. The next five minutes of your 20 minute practice will be speaking. Speaking is incredibly, incredibly important. The problem is you might be able to listen to a lot of things, but when it comes to saying them, words are not in your active vocabulary. They're in your passive vocabulary, which means you understand them. But when you need to actually say them, they flip from your mind. You're like, oh, where did this word, how do I actually pronounce it? The thing is, even reading out loud can be considered speaking practice because when you read out loud, you're like, oh, how do I actually read this word? Because when you're reading a book, you don't really think about pronouncing something. But when you start reading out loud, you're asking yourself questions. Oh my God, how do I pronounce this word? I've never uh, said it in my whole life and by saying it for the first time you actually start practicing it so first of all reading out loud second website that i wanted to recommend is actually called speakandimprove.com it is a research project by university of cambridge it's basically a robot let me let me show you something so they they will start asking you questions and you will answer them what's your name my name is marina You can listen to your answer. How do you spell your family name? How do you spell your family name? Okay. M-O-G-I-L-K-O. -O. Where are you from? So this cute little robot is going to ask you questions about you and then it's going to dig into different topics. I think this is very useful for people who just don't want to talk to themselves because it is so weird sometimes when Marina tells you on YouTube that you have to talk to yourself and I honestly I love talking to myself out loud but not everybody likes it so the robot is a great way to practice your spoken English again the website is called speakandimprove.com another way to practice is to actually use another website that I mentioned today Elo.org what they have there is they have videos of people answering questions so for example the question would be do you like taking selfies so your task is to pause right there, answer, but don't say yes or no, elaborate. Yes, I love taking selfies because I can uh, create the best lighting for myself because I know the best angles and uh, I just love documenting my face every day, whatever. Try to elaborate, then you press the play button and you start listening to other people answering the question. I think it's a great way to practice your answer first and then get inspired by people answering the same question because you can borrow some vocabulary and some phrases that they've used. Another great website actually allows you to talk to your phone. The website is called speechnotes.co. It wasn't actually created for language learning purposes. The whole idea behind this website is for you to say things and it's going to transcribe them, which means the robot robot on the website or whatever the the algorithm on the website will create a transcribed version of whatever you said two things why it's a good way to practice english first if you mispronounce something if you mispronounce a word the algorithm wouldn't understand it and you will need to check your pronunciation google that word say it again until the algorithm actually understands and the second thing the robot would actually add all the symbols like semicolon exclamation point question mark so you will learn how to use them in english and again when it comes to speaking i would say just talk to yourself Talk to yourself about your day. Talk to yourself about your goals. I love talking to myself. In general, I love talking as, as you might have guessed. Okay, we have 10 minutes left for your practice and seven minutes go to vocabulary. Once you've done your listening part, once you've done your speaking part, you've probably encountered at least three to five new words and this is your time to practice them. I wouldn't recommend learning more than five words a day. So write them down and again, create sentences with them and say them out loud. Just try it. I know you're like, okay, okay, Marina, whatever, I will say them out loud. 
but do it actually. You will see how you're, because it happens to me all the time. I start reading something out loud or I start talking to someone, a native speaker, about a book that I just read in English and I want to pronounce a word or like some name that I saw in that book and I realize I can't because I never pronounced it and I'm like, oh my God. So it's either an audiobook or you read out loud all the names that you do not understand how to pronounce. So it's really important. And I want you to wrap up your practice with a three minute reflection of your goals or where you're heading. I love telling people to create a dream board. It's crazy how it works for you because you're creating a destination for your brain, a destination for all of your goals. I am learning English because I have this dream board where I have uh, Gary Vaynerchuk um, because I want to be in the same conference with him. I want to be a speaker at a business conference in the US um, together with Gary. He's a, a very inspiring Im immigrant. I have a house that I want to buy. I even have bed sheets that I really, really like and they're on my dream board. And every time that I sit at my desk, I stare at this dream board and I'm like, I am getting closer. And today I was invited to an event. Hopefully it's gonna happen. They're gonna send me official confirmation next week. But that event, a red carpet event, was on my dream board. So it's just crazy how it works. And I highly, highly encourage you to create at least 100 wishes that are connected with your English language level and be as specific as you can. Like, I want this apartment in Los Angeles. This is how much it costs. This is how I get there. I want this degree from this university. This is how much it costs. This is, you know, how much I need to score my TOEFL. I want to have this, like, even think of physical things. I want the new iPhone. I want the new laptop. I want this book, that book, like put everything on your dream board and understand that English is your instrument that's gonna get you there. As you know, when you try to master something, you have to be consistent. But being consistent doesn't mean doing boring things. Being consistent means just doing something every single day for at least 15 minutes. Today we're gonna explore a 15 minute daily English language routine that can help you with your language and also make your life more exciting because language equals life. It's not as boring as a textbook. It is your life. So if you're interested in making learning English more fun and making your life more fun, watch this video up to the very end. I have prepared a plan for you that is gonna help you improve your vocabulary, reading skills, writing skills, listening skills, and grammar. Let's dive in. This is a weekly plan. So you will do something different every day, but we're starting with day zero, and this is when you set a goal for yourself. Now, the problem is a lot of our goals are always connected with external factors. I want my teacher to be happy with me. I want to score 100 on TOEFL. These motivations are external because they depend on what other people or test makers think about your English. I want you to focus on something internal. I want to be happy with the way I sound, with my new accent. I want to be able to understand my favorite movie in English. I want to be able to start blogging in English. I want to be able to create a resume on LinkedIn in English and start reaching out to potential clients. Make this motivation internal because it's going to help you tremendously through the process. The problem is if you seek external motivation and it doesn't happen, you become demotivated and you stop. My goal here is to make you super excited about the English language so you don't stop. My types, my ideas of how to make learning English even more exciting is connecting it with the things that you love. So one of the things that I do, I started singing in English because I know this is the language of the most popular songs in the world, except Korean. So internal motivation internal excitement is really important when setting a goal in English. And of course, it doesn't mean that you have to give up all of the goals connected with taking the tests, etc. They have to be there, but they don't have to define your whole journey. When you decided what the goal is, you need to learn how to be consistent. One thing that really helps me stay consistent is a habit tracker. And habit tracker is basically a tracker that looks like this, 
where you create a set of activities for yourself that I'm gonna mention in this video, and then every day or every week, you mark whether you've done them or not. This tracker would visually represent how much time you're spending on what, and I would recommend starting with something that is less exciting for you, like if you're struggling with grammar, but you're really passionate about learning American accent, still start with your grammar because when you start you have the most energy and it makes sense to start with things that are harder. I don't want to sound arrogant but I think I've created beautiful trackers that I use that other people and thousands of students use. Uh, they are weekly, monthly and yearly and I was amazed how they help you form a habit so you don't have to force yourself to learn English but you just do it automatically. Now you're all set with your goals, you have your habit trackers, it's time to create your study plan. And please remember that every study plan is individual and unique. I'm suggesting a framework here and please feel free to adjust it. Monday is our vocabulary day. And please remember that it's a 15 minute daily English language routine. So nothing that makes you depressed. We're doing light, exciting, exercises and after those 15 minutes if you feel like you want to continue then go ahead and nothing is stopping you and sometimes you will end up spending a couple of hours learning english that's perfect but 15 minutes a day is something you have to do i want you to start your week with vocabulary because this way you would be able to practice the words that you've learned in other days of the week doing different exercises on different aspects of english i would recommend not more than five words a day and i would recommend focusing on phrasal verbs just because it is easier to learn them phrasal verb is when you have a verb and then you add different prepositions and the meaning changes completely we've actually created graphs that make these more visual and uh, they are in my workbook and this workbook comes with a couple of classes where I explain how to use it and um, it has everything that you need for this 15 minute daily practice so feel free to check out the link down in the description box below now Tuesday is our listening day and here you can do two different things first of all you can totally watch your favorite TV show I am watching Better Call Saul right now oh my god not only am I learning new vocabulary, I'm also learning negotiation skills and all things connected with the legal system in the US, so highly, highly recommend it. But this TV show is more advanced. If you're intermediate, upper intermediate, I would choose something that is easier to understand. For example, Gossip Girl, oh my God, I love it. Fashion, New York, high-end society and i personally selected 60 phrases that i've learned watching tv shows like gossip girl stranger things emily in paris those are all suitable for intermediate slash upper intermediate another thing that you can do for your listening and this is actually like if you ask me marina what is your favorite exercises in english of all i would say this and I, uh, I did this exercise for the first time when I traveled to the UK to learn English. It was in Marlborough College. They printed out lyrics of some songs, but some words were missing. And then they switched on the song and we had to fill in the gaps. Oh my God, I love this exercise so much. Just because you're listening to an amazing song and you're also learning new vocabulary and you're also listening to a new accent. And because that was Great Britain, they switched on. Um, a song with with the British accent. I really liked it. So we decided to recreate something like this an experience for you again in my workbook You're gonna find lyrics to my and Vanya's songs. We both sang. Vanya is much more professional I just started singing, but I think it's such a cool thing to hear us sing and also go through the lyrics and fill in the missing words But of course you can do this with any other song Wednesday is for reading and here my tip that I give to everyone who starts reading in English, read something that feels natural for your level of English. Because if you start with more advanced literature, you have to stop for every fifth word that you see. Oh my God, are you gonna be bored? You're gonna, you're gonna start hating the language. You're gonna start hating reading. Read Instagram captions, that's fine. That's totally fine. If you wanna read shorter texts on Instagram, it is totally fine to want to subscribe to one of your favorite creator substacks or email list and read their emails. 
some of the emails that I can recommend, I read Collins and Samir, the published press. They are creators for creators. So they explore topics like becoming a creator on YouTube, becoming a creator on Instagram. I like subscribing to professionals here in Silicon Valley, like Lenny Rashidsky is a product manager and I follow him on Substack as well. You know, read whatever you want, whatever excites you. It doesn't have to be a textbook. It doesn't have to be American classical literature. It's great if it is, but it doesn't matter if it's not. Now, Thursday is for speaking and writing. The thing is, speaking and writing are kind of similar for our brain because we are learning to express our thoughts in English. So choose whatever you want. I would do both. Um, speaking to a camera has taught me a lot. So if you want to do something like a recap of what happened to you during this week, what you've read, what you've learned, how are you progressing towards your goal? Maybe you had something that happened to you this week and you want to share it. And it could be a video, it can be a voice message to your friend, it can be a WhatsApp group. Or another thing that you can do is um, journaling, something that can really help with your mental health and you can do different types of journaling you can do the gratitude journaling so every thursday you sit down and you write down 20 things that you're grateful for this week this is an amazing practice to help you stay sane and help you stay grateful for everything that you have another thing that you can do is write down top 10 things that you would buy yourself once your goal of learning English is complete. Imagine you move to the States or whatever you're dreaming of. You move to the States, you start a company, you're making $10,000 a month, what would you get yourself? Uh, this mental exercise also helps you visualize your real goals, some physical things that could make you happy. So adopt any practice that you want. Now, Friday is for grammar. And I know grammar can be one of the most challenging things in English for a lot of people. And this is why I specifically chose Friday for grammar. The thing is on Friday, our brain is like, oh, this is the last day of the week, uh, Saturday's tomorrow. So we tend to, I tend to do this. I tend to work more on Friday versus Monday because I am expecting the weekend and I am happier, I am more relaxed. So Friday is when I do harder things. I don't know if this works for you, feel free to change this routine, but may I suggest some topics that you should focus on upcoming Fridays? Topic number one that almost everyone I know struggles with um, is articles. A and the. Another topic, marker words for tenses. I know we tend to learn tenses step by step, like this is how it's formed, etc. I'm pretty sure you all learned them this way. Try to do another way, try to do marker words. When you see a word yet, what tense is it? Read a sentence, get the context, define the tense. Conditionals, reported speech, modal verbs, Prepositions. Oh my God, I can think of so many topics here. Okay, I'm gonna give you one final encouragement. I challenge you to spend the next 30 days following this routine and learning English for 15 minutes a day, excluding weekends. I haven't mentioned weekends because I know maybe you have a family and it's family time uh, and you need time to rest. But let's do weekdays, Monday to Friday for 30 days. 30 days might seem like a lot when you first hear about it, but believe me, they're gonna go by fast, but you will be able to form a habit. You will find this challenge in my workbook, English as a Lifestyle, how to stop learning English and start living it. This is my philosophy behind learning any language. It's for your life, it's for you, it's for your goals not for some test makers. This is the workbook that I've been referring to throughout this video. It has everything that you need to complete this challenge. It teaches you different grammar aspects. We've created a lot of exercises so you can practice. We have created a lot of exercises for you listening, reading, vocabulary. And it also comes with 1000 cards with most used words in English. Yes, exactly. You're gonna get a list of 1000 most used words in English. And if you learn how to use them, you will be able to communicate in English and you will be able to put them on cards that come together with this workbook. You will print them out and you will start repeating them every day. Again, you can purchase this workbook right from the description here. This workbook has been purchased by tens of thousands of students and they absolutely love it. Hope you're gonna join the crowd. I hope this workbook will help you get inspired by English and that it would help you complete the 30 day English language learning challenge. Today, we're gonna talk about building a system 
to learn any foreign language. Now I'm going to use English as an example, but this system is universal. I wish I had something like this years ago when I started learning a language. I'm gonna give you a free template. I'm gonna walk you through it. Let's do it, get ready. We're gonna use a platform called Notion. I'm an absolute fan of them. Uh, I've been using them to run my business, run my YouTube channels, make my own notes. And today I'm gonna show you a system that you can use absolutely free to structure everything that's going on with your language. Because in my case, like I get so many recommendations of what to watch, uh, what to see, which YouTubers to follow to learn a language. And now when I watch those YouTubers, I learn a lot of different things. But if I write them down in just one note, I quickly forget the context and they stop making sense. So let me show you everything. Now let's start with goals. Remember how I told you that it's very important to have a specific goal when you learn a language. So think about something that makes you excited. For example, get master's degree in the USA. Or it could be start making money on Upwork and Upwork is this freelance platform uh, where you can uh, work with international companies. And it's very important to have a specific date let's do 2024 or start making money on Upwork. For example, you want to take the first order in like August, 2022, I don't know. So make this section very specific and every time you would open your planner, you'd be like, oh my God, this is why I'm learning a language. But then it's great to have big goals because they give you direction. But in order to keep studying, you need to give your brain this extra dopamine by setting smaller goals reaching them every week or every month and celebrating them. Celebrating means even like saying, Marina, you did well. Okay, goals for this week. For example, watch two episodes of whatever show you're watching in English and then learn past perfect or learn 10 idioms like for something like this and goals for the month. They can be bigger. Read a book and like watch 10 movies in English, learn 100 new words, which might be too much, but if you're in this learning mode, then you know, why not? Now, once you have all of your goals right in front of you, you update them every week when it comes to weekly goals, uh, you update them every month when it, when it comes to monthly goals, the next step is to actually get into details, like how are you learning a language? Now, next in here, we have your activity tracker. I'm gonna get back to it a bit later. Uh, this is like your board where you have columns of whatever you're doing, but um, let me start with vocabulary first. So your vocabulary actually consists of three sections, words that you're learning, phrases that you're learning, and idioms, because those are different structures within a language and I want you to group them before you actually learn them. So here you click new and we have different fields that you would need to um, fill in. For example, let's say reference, meaning mention or refer to provide information. Example sentence. I requested a reference from, oops, reference from my bank. Then status here, you can choose from new, learning, or I already know. Uh, basically here, let's say you're learning it because later you would be able to sort them by whatever the status is. And if you know this word already, you would just hit I know, and then you would be able to hide them so that you don't have to repeat them all the time. And then the topic, you would be able to add more topics here. Right now we have food, weather, business, school, let's do business. And the type here is words. And so basically if you made a mistake and you put it in phrases, it automatically goes to the second, to the second category here. So everything is automated for you. And if you need more customization, this is why I love Notion. You would be able to just customize everything uh, based on your needs. You would be able maybe to add like verbs or maybe you want to add American English phrases. So whatever you want you would be able to add here and then we also have source you see source is very important for the context because when we talk about all of those um, memory training hacks a lot of methods are actually based on associations so whenever you mention a resource your brain is like oh 
it starts remembering circumstances. It starts remembering what actually happened when you watched my video. And you'll be like, oh, Marina had this example. Now I remember what she meant. So 20 useful idioms, Lingua Marina. Maybe you were reading a book, so you will create different tags for yourself. Now, let me show you something. For example, this reference, you're like, oh, I know this word already. And I don't want to see words that I've learned. So we choose filter, add a filter here, status, does not contain, I know. See, it disappeared, it's no longer here, but then it's actually in your database. And if you want to calculate the amount of words that you've learned in a month, it's all stored there, but it doesn't distract you because if you know the word, you don't have to see it all the time. Every entry can be opened as a page if you want to just uh, dedicate more of attention to a particular phrase. So this is the way you can see it. Uh, white elephant, no longer needed, but it costs a lot of money. This is the meaning. Then we have the example sentence. This office is a white elephant. Everyone is working from home, but we keep paying rent. Then the status is new. 20 useful idioms. Uh, topic, we could do, I don't know, white elephant. It doesn't really matter. It can, can be used anywhere. So let's just uh, leave it out. And the type here is idiom. And then we have white collar office worker. And this is basically business. Let's pretend that tomorrow you have a test for business English and you're like, let me remember all the idioms I've learned in business. And you have like thousands of entries here. Basically what you do, you just type business here and Notion sorts everything for you. You have your business idioms listed. Again, if you had more, you would have more. But this is again, super convenient because maybe you're writing an email, a business email, and you want to sound cool. I don't know. There could be many reasons, but you would be able to sort them uh, just by uh, typing something that you need in the search bar. So this is your vocabulary 2022. I remember when I started learning a language, I just had a regular notebook where I had two columns, word translation, word translation. Whenever I was putting an entry into my notebook, I would be like, I wouldn't even be able to use it because there is no system. There is no structure. I am so grateful that Notion has this. Oh my God. And one last thing in the vocabulary before we go into next section, um, this database has two views. We added them already. It could be all words or just learning. So basically when you do the learning, you would only be able to see what you're learning. So for example, here idioms, you're only learning white light, but then you can easily go back to all idioms. This is all made ready for you. Again, go ahead, download this template completely free. Don't forget to copy it to your own notion to be able to edit it. So basically what you would need to do when you open this template, you click duplicate and uh, it takes you to your own notion. Now this is your brand new system to learn a vocabulary. Let me show you something even more exciting, something that you can use even if you're if, even not for languages, this can be for any subject. We're going back to a learning English page and uh, we're going to resources. Now, this is one of my favorite sections just because it can be applied to anything that you're learning. Even if you're studying crypto or you're studying photography or you're studying geography, you're like, I am getting so many resources. I'm watching YouTubers, I'm watching TikTokers, and like there is so much information. I want to remember where it is all coming from. Now here you basically add resources that you're using to learn a language. For example, you're reading this book, Willpower Doesn't Work. And uh, this, you add type of content, you add a link to it and uh, you check mark whether it's completed or not. For example, I am watching this TV show called um, Inventing Anna on Netflix or like Emily in Paris that we have here. It's serious, but we also have YouTube, we also have article, movie. Again, you would be able to customize everything, but it's another series. I'll put a link here and I will check mark completed. And actually when I checked marked it, it disappeared because we have two types of views here, new resources and completed. And if we want to see what's completed, it's going to be here. There is another video of mine, how to study in the US for free. And then you go back to um, new resources. Now, a perfect use case for something like this is when you're talking to your friend and uh, he or she says, you know, when I was learning English, I watched this TV show, whatever, like you have to watch it. Or you're talking to a native speaker and you ask them what their favorite book is and they'll be like, oh, you should totally read William Shakespeare, this 
book and you're like, okay, let me type this in. Um, so this is where you collect all the resource. And again, I don't know if you've ever been in this situation, but for me, like this happens all the time. Everybody keeps recommending movies and books, but then in the evening when I finally have free time to watch something or read something, I sit down and I can't find any notes. I don't remember what people recommended. Now you have a resource. A Notion can be used from your laptop and on your mobile phone, so uh, pretty easy to use it. Okay, so you started collecting resources. Now let me show you the next step. Now, for example, you started reading a book, Willpower Doesn't Work, one of my favorite books. You go to this book, you click three dots, and you click copy link. Then you go back to the learning English page and to activity tracker. You insert this link, select mention a page and drag it to not started column. So now we have this book that you are starting to read. Now, when you do that, you open the tab and we have created templates for you here because it's a new book. You select new book and see what happens. You have chapter one, you have chapter summary that you can fill in to remember the details. You have key vocabulary and you see what happens here. Put in vocabulary like in you, you learn a new word from this book, willpower, meaning control to do something. Example sentence, willpower doesn't work. Status, learning, topic, whatever. Type words and source here, you add another one, willpower doesn't work. See, it's automatically added. And then you can also add key takeaways and you can do this for every chapter. Now, let's close it. And the most exciting thing is when you now go to your vocabulary, you see willpower is already here. And this way you're able to collect words from the resources that you're learning and they all go to the same database and you're like, oh, I learned this word from this book, this word from another book. And it's a lot easier to memorize things like that. For example, if you started watching a video, you embed it here and then you write down vocabulary and you write down key takeaways. Or maybe it's new series podcast. Here we have episode one, episode two. Again, vocabulary, summary, key takeaways. Now, one quick thing. Notion is amazing in a way that you can embed videos here, which means you don't have to open YouTube tab, open Notion tab and switch between tabs all the time. So you just paste a video that you've been watching and then here you click embed a video. See what happens? The video is right here in your Notion. So you watch it and you write down the new words and phrases that you've learned. For example, you start watching a video. Let's see what Marina says here. What? Once in a blue moon. When something happens once in a blue moon, that means it happens really rarely. So once in a blue moon, very rare. Uh, okay, we have an example sentence, for example, status learning. Topic doesn't have to be here. It is an idiom, not a phrase. Source 20 useful idioms lingua marina. This is how you work with a video now. You just write things down while watching the video in Notion. By the way, for everyone who uses this Notion template, you're gonna get a special gift from me. There is a section on free useful resources that you would be able to use. Uh, they are from LinguaTrip, free worksheets, templates, videos. They will be all available in the special free resources section in the Notion template. The link is down below. Now, this is all very customizable. I'm gonna leave the link to Notion below. I'm gonna leave a link to this template below. I am Notion affiliate, which means that if you ever decide to upgrade to a paid version, I will get some commission, but you can also keep using it completely for free. I highly, highly recommend using Notion because it's just so flexible and you can build your own systems. And I'm all about building systems. I love building them because they make our lives so much more structured and easier. And we actually become more flexible when we have a system. Today, we're gonna to talk about improving vocabulary and I'm gonna suggest a study plan that I use myself as a non-native speaker, as a person who spent six years living in the US, doing business in the US, raising venture capital in the US, speaking at conferences, emceeing events, I still learn new words 
every single day. It's just, it's an endless process. But once you master it, once you create a routine to learn new words, it's going to become an enjoyable process. So today I'll share some of my tips and tricks with you. English is the language that I use every day. I'm originally from Russia, but I also learned German and Italian. So I've been using these techniques for a while now. And I wanna start with a really cool example. A word that I've learned yesterday, I'm gonna remember it forever, just because sometimes Americans come up with words on the go. And this is the first time I've heard this word. And I'm pretty sure you don't learn these words at school and you won't find them in a textbook and I'm pretty much sure that most of the teachers would not teach those words but the problem is native speakers don't care about the way English is taught they just invent words on the go so yesterday I've heard a word friendier I'm gonna explain it to you so that you can learn this word and also another word that it's derived from so there is a term NDA, non-disclosure agreement. And I was at a meeting with a venture capital firm and I was meeting other startups. So those startups were talking about their plans and they were like, we're gonna start this new product, but it's a secret. Have you all signed an NDA? So basically an NDA is an agreement that you sign before a meeting or before a presentation. And basically you agree to not share information uh, from this meeting. The thing is we haven't signed any NDA agreements, but the person who invited us told that startup that we were under a friend DA. So basically they just asked us as friends to not share this information with our friends or partners or colleagues. Friend DA. Now this is how I learned this word friend DA. And because I have a situation, I have an association, I am 100% sure I'm gonna remember this word in 10 years. And I'm 100% sure I'm gonna use this word in my speech just because I've experienced this situation. And this is the best way you can learn. And because you heard this story from me, if you're interested in business, Silicon Valley, startups, entrepreneurship, you would probably remember this story, right? And you probably remember this word, but not only this word, you would also remember the term NDA, non-disclosure agreement. Isn't that all exciting? And this is my rule number one when learning new words. Try to find a story that will sit together with this new word in my brain. Just like this story I told you. Sometimes you will be like, but Marina, it's so hard to find these stories, right? One thing I really love doing is reading about how people actually invented that word. Where did it come from? And there is a really easy way to do it. For example, there is an idiom to take a rain check. You can go to Google and ask, where does the phrase take a rain check come from? And then you will find the story. The term originated in baseball. In the 1800s, spectators who attended games that were postponed or canceled because of weather could receive a check to attend a future game at no extra charge. And this way you will be able to connect history with the word's meaning. And I love it, I love it. If you ask me, Marina, what are the most fascinating aspects of learning a language? I would say, first of all, accents. Oh my God, I love them. I love exploring accents and the way people pronounce different words in different countries. Number two, I would say definitely history. Where? did this or that phrase come from? And number three, probably culture. You know, how people react to different things, how they want ghost you, or uh, on the opposite side, call you a friend right after your first meeting. So this is all super exciting. And this is my rule number two, guys. Just be excited. Make it as exciting as possible for yourself to learn English. Set goals. Print out images of what your life is going to look like in two years if you speak English at an advanced level. Like, where does that lead you? It's just gonna help you with your motivation so, so much. And I truly believe that everyone is capable of learning English and making it their instrument. It's just a matter of, you know, being excited about it. Now, when it comes to defining your goals and dreams or whatever you call them, this is actually where you start. This is day number one. If you're willing to create a study plan on day number one, you manifest your goals, you print out pictures, you imagine your dream life that you will start living. 
once your English becomes upper, intermediate, advanced, whatever. On day number two, or as the next step, you answer the question, where do I find useful vocabulary? And here you need to make sure that you understand your goals, right? Because if it's university admission and you know you need to take the GRE test, oh my God, good luck. <laughs> the GRE is this test that you take in order to apply for master's programs in the US. And the thing is, it uses really complicated vocabulary and there are textbooks with hundreds of words that you need for that test. There are books with words that you need for the TOEFL test for your team. Like if you need to take a test, make sure you know which test you're going to be taking. If you just need a particular level, you could Google, I don't know, 100 intermediate level words in English, 100 advanced level words in English. And this is how you come up with a list of words that you would need to learn. My team and I is actually, well, my team at LinguaTrip is actually working on something super exciting to help you with this number two thing, but it's a big project, so it's gonna take a while, but I'm just getting you excited about it. Just stay tuned. It's gonna go live in um, hopefully March 2023, February 2000, we'll see, but stay tuned. I'm excited. A couple more resources that I would recommend for finding lists of words that you need to learn are websites like British Council or Vocabulary. Now, day number three, you start learning those words. And you see how I divided all of your actions? I just don't want you to think that learning English is all about sitting down for a few hours. It's about making it part of your life. So it's maybe 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, as long as it's consistent, as long as you can do it every single day, just like my kid, she goes to this Kumon Japanese mathematics school and they ask her to learn for 10 minutes a day, including holidays and weekends. And I think it's a great system. Every single day, every night we sit down and complete exercises for just 10 minutes. Very low friction for your brain because you're like, oh, it's just, it's just 10 minutes. I'm going to be fine. It's not the whole hour. It's, it's just the small period of time. So it's easier. 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Just make it a routine. I'm going to share a couple of methods. And one of the methods that really works for me, um, I've started this video with this method, uh, telling yourself a story, educating yourself about the history. Another resource that I would recommend is a website called youglish.com. You basically type your word or phrase in the search bar and listen to how native speakers use and pronounce it. This is a great way to experience a word in different ways by reading it, by putting it in your list, by um, listening to native speakers pronounce it. And uh, by the way, five words a day max. Don't do 1000 words a day. I know I had a video on 1000 words a day, but those words are very specific words. Like police, you probably have a very similar word in your language, but um, with all of the other words, five words a day, do not overload your brain, please. And something that also really works for me is creating an exercise book and writing down the five words that you learn every single day just to make sure you go back to them for at least a week or a couple of weeks to check back on them, to see whether you remember them or not, to check whether you've started using them or incorporating them in your speech. If you've ever taken a course with English with Lucy, what we did there, we teach you British and American vocabulary there, and we have tests after every class, at the end of each week, at the end of the course. And we're testing the same words over and over again, just to make sure we create the spaced repetition. Now, the next day, you're gonna start your class with repeating the five words you've learned the previous day. And what you're gonna do is come up with new examples of using those words. And on that day, also learn, attention, collocations. A collocation is two or more words that often go together. For example, you've learned the word bond. Now, a collocation with this word could be bond market. And some dictionaries would actually provide collocations. And Longman is one of those dictionaries. So I would go to that dictionary and see how people actually use that word. Because sometimes you learn a phrase or a word and you're like, okay, sounds cool. How do I use it? So learning collocations is a great way to learn how to use this word with other words. So for example, 
If we look at the word bond in the Longman Dictionary, let's scroll down a bit and see a table with collocations. For a bond, it's a close, strong bond, a common bond, a special bond, to form, forge a bond, to strengthen a bond, to break, destroy a bond. This process makes it easier for your brain to remember the word, to remember how people use it, and to just you know, feel at ease with this word because sometimes you're like, oh, I know this word, but we're not friends. We're not friends. I'm not gonna use you in my speech just because I don't know how. Well, this is what collocations are for. The next day, you're gonna revise the five words. You're gonna reread your collocations and you're gonna come up with sentences using collocations you learned the previous day. And here is a pro tip. If you attend a language school or you have English classes at your university or at school, bring your exercise book with the new vocabulary to the class to make sure that you actually start using those new words and impress other students and teachers. And the next day, you're gonna start repeating the process. You're gonna make a list of five new words that you're going to learn the next day you're going to do collocations, the next day you're going to do sentences with collocations. How exciting is that? And you go on and on and on and make it your routine. So this study plan is more or less relaxed just because I'm asking you for five new words every three days because there's a process of remembering them. It's actually okay to do five words each day, but just make sure you repeat the steps for all of these words every day. It would just make the process more intense. It really depends on your goals. When I was preparing for my GMAT test, um, I learned a lot of words in a day just because I had to. But the thing is, they don't stay in your long-term memory. They only stay in your brain for a short period of time. They're somewhere in the back, I know. But because I've never used those words, I only learned them for uh, the purpose of taking the GMAT test, I know this is not really what I want because I want to start using um, those words. I want to make my speech um, more vibrant, more advanced. So these days, I think I am learning maybe five new words each week. And I do that by writing them down, by trying to incorporate them in my speech, doing collocations, you know, noticing when native speakers use them. And it's a process, it's a lifelong process. We live and we learn. This is one of the most exciting things about the language. You're always learning and the language is changing and there is no like right or wrong. It's just, it's just an exciting process. And uh, yeah, congratulations on choosing this path uh, of making English part of your life. And if you follow this study plan for at least 30 days, you're gonna end up with at least 50 new words in your active vocabulary. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. Please subscribe to this channel. Please share this video with your friends. We're also in the process of learning English. Bye-bye. Hi guys, it's Maida from Colombia and I just wanted to thank the Lingua Marina channel for the support and knowledge that provides to all English learners. It's really cool to find a channel where you can get the tools to reach your desired level and what I like the most is that you can get a feel of how this language is truly used or spoken in the US and this helped me to prepare for the trip that I will have to the United States. So speaking English, it's not unattainable. So keep going and I hope God bless you all. Hello Marina, I'm Alice from Vietnam. I'd like to thank you very much for being a great effort in my English career. Every time I watch your videos, I have a sense of motivation and that's the reason why my English has upgraded a lot. So please keep making videos for English learners like me to improve our English levels. And one more time, thank you very much. Hey Marina, hope you're having a good day. I'm Muskan from Pakistan. I'm a high school graduate and I started watching your videos since last May and then I scored 110 out of 116 in my Dilling English test and then I got into two American universities, yeah! Uh, I actually started thinking in English and my parents, they're also doing really well with their accents. I really wanted to appreciate your videos in which you say, stop saying I don't like it, use advanced words, it's not for me, I'm not crazy about that, these kind of videos, they are my favorite. And your collaboration with Lucy was just amazing. 
So I wanted to say how many people are watching Marina's videos. Please don't forget the consistency. Continue watching videos on a daily basis. This is going to improve your accents. So you all are able to break the ice. Thank you, Marina. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.